Well, holy shit, y'all. It took them five fucking years to notice it, but it looks like the mainstream media might finally be catching on to the root of the problem. In the last week, I've seen CNN, The Washington Post, The Atlantic, The New York Times, and fucking USA Today all running stories highlighting the role of evangelical Christianity in Trump's attempted coup. And yes, most of those are left-leaning publications, but USA Today is the goddamn definition of mainstream, and even left-leaning publications acknowledging that Christian terrorism is a genuine threat represents a big step forward. To understand the importance here, I think we should try to rewind the clock to, I don't know, let's say September 10th of 2001, pick a date out of a hat. Even for those of us old enough, it's hard to remember just how worried we weren't about Islamic terrorism back then. Right? I mean, we had countless examples by that point. Beirut in 83, the embassies in Tanzania and Kenya in 98, the first World Trade Center bombing in 93. There was no question that this was an ongoing deadly threat, and yet we didn't take it all that seriously. Now, I'm sure there were plenty of people within our government who were taking it very seriously at that time, right? Our intelligence services did issue that report called Look Out, Osama Bin Laden's going to crash airplanes into buildings in New York City, after all. But as a nation, you know, as a culture, we didn't take them seriously. And that's because they were a fucking joke. I mean, yes, they'd killed people often by the hundred. But as often as not, they'd fuck up some kindergarten level shit or get caught the dumbest way imaginable. Like, like remember Pan Am Flight 103, the, the one that blew up over Lockerbie, Scotland? Now, I, I, that was a wholesale tragedy. 270 people died. I think it's still the deadliest terrorist attack in the UK's history. But, but the dudes who did that got caught because they, they had to fill the suitcase that the bomb was going to be in with clothes to make it like look like a regular suitcase at a glance. So they just went to a thrift store and randomly bought a bunch of clothes with no thought as to the sizes, types, or styles. Needless to say, the guy running that store was like, what the fuck's going on here? He calls in a tip after the bombing, after they, you know, put on the news that it was in a suitcase. And there was a camera there. I mean, for fuck's sake, they caught one of the terrorists from the first World Trade Center bombing when the idiot tried to get the deposit back for the truck they had rented to put the bomb in. Right. And so by and large, the attitude amongst most Americans at the time was that, yes, they could be sporadically dangerous, but mostly they were just fucking silly. If you want a great representation, look at the 1994 Schwarzenegger movie, True Lies. Right? I mean, the first thing that you're going to notice about the terrorists and that is how wildly racist movies were back then. But, but then you're going to notice how, sure, the jihadis were dangerous, but far more than that, they were a thing to be mocked, not a thing to be feared. And then we saw the consequences of stupidity at its grandest scale, and there were no silly Islamic terrorists in our movies anymore. You know, look, I'm not saying that we can't laugh at the guy who tased himself in the nuts to death. I'm not even saying that we shouldn't. I mean, even though that turns out not to be true, we should still laugh at it. The very fact that his supporters are so fucking stupid that we couldn't dismiss that out of hand is funny. But let's be very careful along the way that we're not using that laughter to temper our fear. If I have my choice to face off against an angry rioter dumb enough to tase himself in the nuts to death and one smart enough not to, I'm not at all convinced I'm better off picking the former. And obviously, for things to get as bad as they've gotten, a lot of safety valves have to fail, right? I mean, I mean, there will no doubt be reports and committees digging into all the levels of failure that happened there for years to come. And even though nobody's ever going to single us out for official blame, we are among those failed safety valves. By we here, I mean the nation's skeptics, its rationalists, its atheists. Our self-anointed role is battling against conspiracy thinking and irrationality. Our chosen nemesis is religious stupidity. And yet there we were, impotently watching them bumble their way through the Capitol, looking for the button they had to push to switch our government over to fucking Handmaid's prequel. See, the thing is, they're going to keep doing this shit. They had to literally smash through the windows and break into the Capitol building before our media was even willing to name the problem. And even now, it's only hesitantly, sporadically, and with apology. And while the nation will no doubt get better the second that they're out of power, their terrorism is going to get worse at that point. And along the way, they're going to keep tasing themselves in the nuts to death. And strangely enough, that's going to give them their greatest advantage. Right? Stupid disarms you because stupid is funny. 
But if there's one overriding lesson of the last four years, it's that stupid is actually way more dangerous than smart. And nothing can coax the danger out of stupid quite like religion.